thank you very much for joining us on this Thanksgiving edition of iBerkshire's TV. And it is fitting on Thanksgiving that we have maybe somebody, uh, uh, Sarah Margolis Pinio, from maybe one of the most Thanksgiving-y places <laughs> in Berkshire County. From Hancock Shaker Village, you were the, the curator yes. of the Hancock Shaker Village Museum. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for joining us, first of all. Of course. Thanks for the invitation. You came all the way up from Hancock to Pittsfield here. I did. Uh, and you, of course, uh, you, we've been getting to know each other a little bit offset. You recently moved to Dalton. You are now a Berkshire County resident. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I want to talk about is you have the 60th anniversary of the Hancock Shaker Village Museum coming up. Yes, that's correct. And so we're celebrating in many ways throughout our season next year. Um, we actually reopen to the public next April with, of course, our annual celebration of baby animals, which is, baby of animals. course, a regional hit. Um, and then from there, we transition into our summer season, which includes the opening of two new exhibitions. The first is to honor our 60th anniversary as a museum, which is really a fantastic story. And uh, many Berkshire County residents, I'm sure, actually may remember the opening of Hancock Shaker Village in 1960. Um, the, the village uh, at that time in the late 50s was occupied by three remaining Shaker sisters who over the decades had actually sold off quite a bit of the property, That's incredible. raised a number of the buildings because they really couldn't afford to pay the taxes on them at that point. Um, the Shaker sisters got an offer actually from the owner of a racetrack company who wanted to raise the entire village except for our very iconic roundstone barn around which he planned to build a racetrack. Um, uh, motor race or horses? You know what? I'm actually not even sure. I believe it was motor, but I'm wow. not sure. Wow. Um, and uh, a group of concerned citizens um, led by Amy Bess Miller, who of course is our founder of our museum, counter offered uh, to the Shaker Sisters and the offer was accepted. So we were actually one of the very rare Shaker sites that transitioned directly from being an operative Shaker village to a museum. That's incredible. That's And, and the Hancock Shaker Village, of course, oozes history. Yes. That's really what it's all about, but it's not all that it's about. No. Uh, you have, uh, you're going to be working with a lot of contemporary artists uh, uh, for one of your next exhibits, and it's called? It's called Design 2020. And so one thing that really struck me about uh, the Shaker history and legacy is that it's really an ongoing legacy. The Shakers believed in communal living. They believed in sustainable agricultural practices. They believed in a pristine aesthetic of design and craft. And many of these values are still really resonant to us today. And there are things that we see practiced not only by community groups such as Roots Rising, who's one of our collaborators here in, in Berkshire County, but also by a number of contemporary artists and designers who are really rethinking the material landscape of our everyday life. Um, the Shakers were very unique in American cultural history in that they designed these communities from the ground up, literally. Um, they designed uh, the objects, the day-to-day -day objects, tools, utensils, um, sort of household objects, to furniture, to the buildings themselves in a very sort of unique uniquely American style. And so um, this style is a touchstone for many contemporary artists and designers today, not only for its aesthetic, which we know for sort of very minimal forms, but also for its sort of ideological import, which would be world making, creating these uniquely um, unique pieces for a very specific lifestyle that really um, is outside of a, a more mainstream American lifestyle. So you have a lot of these contemporary artists who take the very old, almost ancient shaker design mm -hmm. and interpreting it, interpreting it in a modern way. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not really speaking specifically about um, individuals who are adopting necessarily a shaker aesthetic, but more so a shaker way of working and thinking about design. So um, these are individuals who, like the shakers, are really um, uh, thinking through making. The Shakers actually uh, viewed craft as a worship practice. Mm. Um, and so similarly, these are individuals who are in their studios and sort of rethinking everyday um, material design forms, things from plates and bowls to furniture to interior spaces and thinking about how they could be designed differently rather with, rather than um, sort of within these established vocabularies of, you know, chair. Um, and table. They're sort of thinking about how they can be redesigned um, to accommodate contemporary life. That's incredible. If that makes sense. I know I'll certainly be there. I've been to Hancock Shaker Village before. I went with my mother. 
nephew and sister, mm -hmm. and I was telling everybody earlier, we got chased by goats, <laughs> yeah. we made biscuits, mm -hmm. my little nephew rang the bell, he had the greatest day of all. Um, this is actually, I'm so thrilled you mentioned this because this is a great reminder. Part of our 60th anniversary um, exhibition in year is that we're going to be collecting Hancock stories. <laughs> so these are stories sourced from the community about visits to the village. And so um, we're going to have an ongoing blog platform that we'll be uploading these narratives to, and they can be written, um, they can be uh, audio. So we'll actually have an opportunity to come to the village and record your stories out loud, oh, like a story great. core type model, huh. or they can be visual. You can submit images of photographs or even objects that maybe you bought at the store in the 1970s. Anything that sort of reminds you of Hancock Shaker Village and there's a personal story attached to it can be uploaded to this um, sort of community-based repository of Hancock stories. I think that's actually going to be an incredible hit and I will probably go down and maybe if Good. my nephew comes back three <laughs> years later all grown up, he can tell his story. Perfect. Um, I was there in the summertime and it was beautiful and lush and green. This, of course, is the holiday season. Mm. And like I said, there's almost no place more holidays than Hancock, Hancock Shaker Village. What do you have going on Thanksgiving, Christmas, anything? Uh, quite a bit, actually. So we closed Monday through Friday, um, this past Monday, uh, Veterans Day weekend. But we are remaining open for uh, Saturdays and Sundays through the new year. So you can come visit us from 10 to 4 p.m. each day. On um, November 30th, which is a Saturday evening, we are hosting our annual Grateful Supper. This is the uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving, and this is a really lovely farm-to-table meal served in our very iconic brick dwelling. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the weekend of December 6, 7, and 8, we are hosting our Hancock Holidays Celebration, which is an annual weekend of events. Um, um, we're doing a Yule Jam on Friday night, which will be a musical performance. Um, Saturday and Sunday, we're hosting Brunch with Santa. And what I'm personally most excited about is our Gingerbread House competition. That's kind of what I'm most excited about. Well. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are taking submissions from the community. Um, there are three sort of tiers you can enter, adults, youth, 17 and under, and then also families. And the theme this year is outstanding works of architecture. And so these can be works of very well-known architecture, things like, I don't know, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water or Buckminster Fuller's geodesic domes, or they can be um, sort of extraordinary works of imaginary architecture invented by our participants. Um, but regardless, they're going to be on display in our in our poultry house gallery for the weekend, and we'll have a panel of local celebrity judges judging the winner for each um, category. So that's every weekend from now until New Year's. Yes. From these are just the general hours. Ten until four. From ten until four on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, you have the weekend of the sixth, seventh, and eighth with all your celebrations. Also the gingerbread, and on the thirtieth, you have your farm-to-table dinner, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Correct. Yes. That's incredible. Uh, for people who say there's nothing to do in Berkshire County, we've just proved you wrong. <laughs> uh, Sarah Margolis Pinio, Hancock Shaker Village. Uh, you are incredible parts of Berkshire County. Uh, if you happen to run into Sarah, ask her. She has a, an amazing history of working. She's a curator, uh, incredibly trained, museums all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I think she's going to be an incredible addition to Berkshire County. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. You all are welcome back anytime. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on iBerkshire's TV, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving.